Today we're going to be talking a little bit about polishers and specifically we're going to compare the Roops with the standard uh, Garros dual action polisher and then we're going to talk a little bit about the rotary and how it all works together. Now on this car here which is a brand new Porsche Cayenne Turbo it was uh, unfortunately taken through an automatic car wash and the trunk here has all kinds of scratches and, and things like that but on this side we're going to use the Roops, on this side we're going to use the DA the Garros DA and we're going to see what happens. But before we get into all that, I want to talk about how these machines work and how they function and what they're actually doing when they're repairing the paint. Um, having that knowledge I think will, will help you decide which machine is going to work best for you. Let's, uh, let's get to it. Now before we get started I want to talk a little bit about the progression uh, of the machines. Now there's a lot more machines than this that we're going to shoot videos on it. We have barrel machines, we have dual headed polishers and all kinds of fun stuff. But today we're going to go over the general categories and the first one being the rotary. Everybody knows this, it's been around forever. This is the Festool Shine X and what I like to consider a rotary is think of it like a scalpel. It's very good um, in the right hands but can be very dangerous in the wrong hands and of course I think you guys know I'm talking about burn through. So what happened is the industry said okay how do we get everybody else using these uh, machines and taking care of their beloved cars? They came out with the dual action um, polisher. This one happens to be uh, from Garros but the P PC I think was one of the first ones and of course Meguiar's. Uh, this one just happens uh, to be in my fleet of machines because it, it has more torque. It's got seven horsepower and it's, it's pretty powerful. Um, so then the next evolution came up uh, and was the Roops. But to go back to this one actually, you know what? They, when they came out with these, think of it as a single axle, right? The rotary spins just like this, right? It creates lots of heat. And they said, okay, wow, that's a little dangerous. Let's try something else. So here's the axle again. Now they came out with, with the dual action. Now the dual action kind of shakes, right? It goes in these kind of funky pattern. At the same time, it's also spinning. So what that's doing is dissipating any uh, possible heat. Uh, this still does generate a little bit of heat, but not like that where it's going to damage it. And the cool part is, it's see it's a free spindle. What happens is if, if you put too much pressure down, it kind of makes a fail safe. It stops. It just, it, it'll keep shaking, but it won't keep spinning. That makes sense? So the next thing they came out with was this, this new concept that Roops um, you know, came to the market with was as this thing is shaking, right? See how it's kind of, uh, I'm doing this specifically, see how it's kind of going in this little circle here? At the same time, it, the pad is spinning, of course, I can't do it because I have a wrist, but um, what they did was they made the throw bigger, right? So as it's throwing more um, footage here, I guess, more space, it's actually doing more correction. So as it's moving, you're getting more correction power at the same time again it's spinning. So that's sort of the evolution of the technology and I have to say it's, uh, it's pretty good. Now both machines I feel like get me to the same spot. The difference here is this does it much quicker. So if you're in line or, or what we call production detailing and you have to fire out a lot of cars during the day, this is going to pick you up 15, 20 minutes a car or whatever the case may be. At the end of the day, that's going to be a total of whatever, two hours or whatever the case may be. So uh, it is uh, almost three times I think as expensive. This is 100 and this is 400, so four times as expensive. Um, but I have to say, if you're in that kind of detailing, this is, uh, this is quite the machine. But more importantly, let's, uh, let's go and buff this, uh, um, the, the trunk here and, and show you the difference and I'll put a, a timer on. Now as always, because I'm a huge nerd, I am measuring or I am using the, the magnifier here to uh, take a look at the paint and make sure that it's equally horrible, which it is. Um, and I'll, I'll take some pictures and put them across and then what I'm going to do is when I'm done I'll show you the after and, and what it took out and we can see if there's any massive difference between uh, one side or the other. Alright, the first side that I'm doing is with the Roops and I have a microfiber cutting pad from Meguiar's uh, on there with a little FG uh, 400 from Minzerna. Now the reason why I'm using the microfiber cutting pad and not the Roops polish, uh, polishing pads is because uh, I feel more comfortable with the microfiber cutting pad. I know what it can do and what it can't do. And for testing purposes, I think it's a, a great way to kind of uh, level or put a bar there so I know if it's over or under or something like that. So that's my little caveat here. I'm letting people know. Let's get started. I'm on six. Let's spread it around a little bit. Alright, let me 
stop this. All right, so about a minute and 30 seconds or so. I didn't really spend a whole lot of time on this because I wanted to, you know, I'm, I'm testing, I'm playing here. Put this down, grab the towel. All right, wipe it off. Wow, for a minute and 30 seconds, this is pretty impressive. So I'm gonna get behind the camera and, and pull it in and show you a little difference here. All right. Let's see if we can get this focused. So this is before, right? Let me pull this down. So there's the little line. As you can see, see all the scratches beforehand? And see it now? What is this? This is a, that's just a smudge. All right? And there's the line with all the cake done. I think you can see that there. There you go. Look at all those. So that was a minute and 30 seconds or so to have it look like glass. And of course, it's not even polished. And I did that pretty quickly. So let's go over to uh, the other section over here. All right, now I'm going to do it with the uh, Garros. I have the same thing, uh, microfiber uh, pad on there. I got my starter. Hit the start, put it down, start it on, spit it in. All right, so I just finished that with the DA polisher, and here's the time, 225. So essentially, what did it take me? An extra minute or so to do this little tiny panel. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you're talking about the entire car, that's a big deal, because th those minutes will add up. And that's all I did was right this little area, and I did the, uh, the uh, tail light as well. So let's take a look. Pull this down. All right. So we can get this to focus. Uh, you see the difference there? So there is correction. I have to say, in my opinion, it came out pretty good. I think there's a little bit, I don't know if you can see, pick this up on camera, but there's a little bit of some heavy marks here. It's hard to see it in this. Um, kind of crazy light here, but there's some heavy scratches right there. I don't know if you can catch that. Um, that didn't come out. I think they probably would have with the roofs just because it's got a little bit more kick to it. But you see the light? So here's the bottom line. The Roops polisher actually does everything that it claims. Now the difference between the dual action and the Roops is two slight things. I think the paint comes out just a little bit better with the Roops and it takes just a little bit less time to achieve that. Those two factors together, I believe, are, is very important to me. Because remember, when you're detailing, uh, you know, we talk about this in the industry, it's really not about the first 90%. It's the last 10% of a detail is that you know is what separates you from another uh, from another job. So that last little 10% is where I spend all of my time and and, and focus all of my energy on. And I think this actually um, makes it easier to achieve that last 10%. Does that make sense? So. The difference is, is very small to people maybe outside the industry, um, uh, and they won't really see the difference between the DA and, and the Roops. But um, for me, uh, I, you know, I, think, I think it's a good investment. It is quite expensive, but uh, for someone who's a professional, great job. For, for someone who's doing a weekend warrior, the DA polisher is, is, is really right behind it. It's only a slight difference, but like I said, in this industry, 
you know, one or two percent is a big deal. Uh, a lot of you are going to ask me, and I'll just get it, just tell you right off the bat. I got this at detailersdomain.com. The gentleman that owns it, Phil, is a uh, a really good detailer, and more importantly, um, he's a good and uh, an honest guy. So, if you're going to buy it, you know, support him. Uh, any questions, shoot me an email at larry at ammonyc.com. And of course, thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful.